Hello, everybody. Welcome to another fabulous episode of Influencers. Um, as always, I am really excited about our guest today. I'm going to give you guys a little intro about our guest, Dennis Higgins, um, who will talk about this, came to us from Courtney Valenti and Kevin McCormick. But Dennis is Oh, how do you how do you summarize Dennis in a couple of words? But he's a veteran marketing and publicity executive, 20 years experience. He's so much more than that. And you'll see that today of what he's um, working currently with to bring us some really great resources for both our residents and beyond. And I'd like to welcome Dennis to the show. Hello, hello, and thank you, Courtney. It's so great to be here. I'm so excited to chat with you. I mean. Everyone, uh, we've, we've only met in these little boxes, you know, one time now, and we had such a fun conversation. Um, I do need to get one of those shirts. I thought at least like jungle theme might help with what we're talking about. So Very, I think that's great. <laughs> um, but Dennis, I know we're going to jump into the shirt that you got on elders for climate action and all this great work that you're doing. And even what you just did this morning sounded exciting. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read. I mean, you have over 20 years, it's probably longer than that, even though you don't, you look so young. Um, publicity and marketing, you've worked on films of every genre, both large and small. You're a dad, you're so much fun, you have such good energy. How did you get into this industry? Um, wow, well, thank you so much for all of that. Uh... Yeah, I am. Uh, I proudly wear uh, an elder's shirt because, uh, like it or not, I'm an elder, and I'm liking it actually. Uh, uh, I um, I'm from New York, in the New York area. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, was born in Queens, but but grew up in the New York area. And uh, uh, you know, I was interested in getting into broadcasting primarily as a way to. Uh, be involved in the sports business because I was not an athlete, but I was a big fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I um, I went to college in the in the very <laughs> I'd like to say the very late, but the seventies. Uh, and um, with that idea, I went to a state university in New York and uh, got into uh, one of the Sunnis. One of the Sunnis up in yep. Oswego. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very, when I say up, I mean way up. Uh, uh, so really not very cold winters there. Not, no, no. Yeah. We could have <laughs> used some snow. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I got into um, communications, which also exposed me to video production. And mm -hmm. uh, I really uh, enjoyed that. And uh, this is back in the day. And a lot of our, a lot of the people uh, uh, who are on this uh, are very knowledgeable about this stuff, I'm sure who, uh, you know, where you had three quarter inch videotape and that was considered revolutionary and how small it was. And it was, you know, a machine about, you know, right. you couldn't lift it and it was three or four suitcases large and now we have our, our cameras. But, um, you know, I went through, I, I went through, uh, I, I graduated from, uh, from SUNY Oswego and uh, went to New York looking for work. And, you know, that was not a time when the economy was great. And I was like walking around knocking on doors and, and, um, you know, this is good for anybody, more probably more particularly to younger people just entering, but you just got to keep knocking on those doors. And mm -hmm. uh, I got a job in, um, I, I got a call, would you be interested in talking to these people at United Artists about a job in publicity? And I was at the point of like, I'm interested in talking about any job in the music business. Right, right. And uh, United Artists was a fabulous place. You know, I mean, these, these are this is back in the day where I literally went in and took a typing test and you know, that's what they were, that was a big part of what they were looking for. And uh, uh, I had no idea about what really what publicity was, but what was great about United Artists is it was one of the last film companies. It actually technically wasn't, technically wasn't a studio, it was a distributor, but mm -hmm. it was one of the last of the film companies that was based in New York. So it wasn't just what you have now and have had for years is uh, essentially a, a the key outpost office of an LA based company. You had a company that, you know, the business affairs and the, and the, uh, uh, all sorts of departments were there right. and, and, and available to, um, 
you know, to, for me to just garner as much information and experience as I could from. And I remember my first boss, boss Bill Werneth in the publicity department, who, uh, uh, you know, and I was a low, you know, an assistant level, and he came by and he, he, he gave me a project and he walked away and he turned and he said, but think about what you're doing, because, you know, we pay you to think here, too. So and it was a great it was a great sentiment that I've always. That's fantastic me. advice. It, That's perfect. it was. It was great because, you know, you're at that level. You just want to run around and hustle and Xerox as many pages as you can or. Yeah, or, you get too or, robotic and. Yeah, they and hired you. Yeah. And, and it was great from that sentiment. And, and um, you know, essentially, uh, as I said, you know, it, all the big companies, all, all, all sorts of companies, but all the big movie companies are, have, have offices in New York. United Artists had a much bigger operation. But almost everybody has a sizable uh, sales office, publicity office, maybe mm -hmm. advertising office. And I, um, as happens in this business, as, as people know, I started to move around. I, I got an offer to be a little bit more than an assistant at another company. And I went over there and mm -hmm. guess what? That didn't work out after a while. And I was looking for work again and I got a job, um, you know, either at that level or below or above. I can't remember at, at WNBC TV in New York at a local, a local TV where, where, you know, you literally... As for publicity, you literally hung out in the green room and listened for little tidbits of uh, gossip that you would then, you know, run down and, and call into yeah. as heard on Live at Five. Uh, and uh, I went to work for a number of different companies. And I, 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 my, my, um, my primary experience was at, uh, I was at 20th Century Fox. Mm -hmm. I was at MGM. And then I went over to Columbia Pictures, which I was there when it became Sony Pictures. Mm -hmm. And all of these things, and, and, you know, anybody who's here knows this, you know, wherever you are, you know, things happen as you are at these companies. So, you know, I look back and I go, oh, my God, I was at 20th Century Fox when Rupert, when Barry Diller came in and then Rupert Murdoch came in and they started Fox Broadcasting. And, um, and, 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 you know, one thing I do want to say is, is, is just one last thing on my history, so to speak, yeah. uh, at least this part of it is. You know, what I came, I ended up moving to LA for Sony Pictures. They offered me to come out here and, and continue and move up in the publicity department. And, you know, the thought, I bit the apple is what happened. You know, the, the idea is, hey, I'm going to go to LA. That's the home office. That's where it's happening. And, and it was great. And I've had a great career, but you kind of realize, wow, that job in New York was like the greatest job in the world. I was the head of the uh, publicity office for a major studio. I was the guy, so to speak, in New York for this studio. Yeah, I was, and here's the here's the best part. I was three thousand miles away from all those meetings that that I ended up attending for, for the next twenty years. Right. Uh, you know, kind of no matter how bad it got, the phone call was eventually going to end, and they were going to let me go home. Once you're in LA, that phone call might not end. Let's stay for another hour of why it's not working. So. But again, exactly. I, don't, exactly. I don't want to say that in any negative way because it's been it's it's a it has been a great business for me and a great career and 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 it was a great move to come out because you know I, I say all that stuff about what a great job it was in New York, but essentially, you uh, as with any industry, you're only going to go so far if you're if you're not in the home office and you're in an outpost. And, yeah. and again, it's New York, so it's not an outpost. That would be clearly the wrong word to use about New York. But uh, but it was um, and it you've was been in L.A. Here. ever yeah. since, right? Yeah. Came out to L.A., been in L.A. Yeah. ever since. You know, it's that thing when you move to L.A., you know, people go, how long you been out here? And you go, I don't know, was it two, three? Oh, 26 years. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's different. It, time doesn't seem to pass in the same way, but it does. Uh, and, uh, you know, I spent I spent a number of years at Sony Pictures uh uh which was you know fabulous and you know the other thing about being at studios is it's like being um you know it's being, being inside the castle you're in the, on the studio grounds you're on the yeah. lot it's magic it's where movies are made yeah uh that job due to a management shift which again you know this is another experience a management change and my boss was out and the new boss wanted someone else coming in and i was out and uh um and um luckily for me everybody treated me very well but i i was out and i i started looking for work and i got 
I went over and I knew some people at Miramax and I went over with the idea that I, I come and maybe I can help out on your awards campaigns because I know those are very big for the Miramax uh, uh, company. And, and lo and behold, I, I was flown into New York to meet Harvey and interview with him and it went very well. And, and, and Harvey said, why don't you come to New York and head up our New York office here and work with the people in LA. And I went there and yeah, it wasn't the best match uh, uh, for me, uh, mm -hmm. but it was a great, it was a and tre <laughs> tremendous learning experience. And, oh yes, uh, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine that'll. And, that's episode two. Yeah, <laughs> that's episode two. And and you know what? Again, they treated me fine. They ended up. It wasn't working out as as what we had all hoped. I ended up moving back to LA and working for them for another year, uh, which was was great. And eventually, I moved to a couple of uh, smaller production companies that made movies uh, that you know did what 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 a whole other area of the business. They secured financing and they produced movies and they made distribution deals or financing deals with major studios. So I worked on, uh, for example, Terminator 3 was a movie this company Intermedia was making. Mm -hmm. They had the right, they got it all together. They got Mr. Schwarzenegger to agree to come back. And, um, and uh, you know, that makes it easier to make a deal at Warner Brothers to distribute the movie and then you know, uh, we're working with Warner Brothers and, and uh, you know, I am representing the filmmaker and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in awe on all the meetings trying to make sure that the filmmaker's needs are taken care of. Uh, but I'm also turning to the filmmaker and go, these people at Warner Brothers, they really know what they're doing. You're probably best to let them do what they're doing. Let them lead, yeah. Exactly. Let them lead. Stay and in they, your lane. They did. And, uh, and then I had another fabulous experience. I worked on a movie called Alexander that Oliver Stone directed that uh, wow. that was his passion project. It, it didn't end up being a, a uh, financially successful film, but it was a tremendous project to work with these great, great creative people, artists. And that again was with Warner Brothers. And, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, uh, you know, that company, um, things on that that burst in, they were financed by a lot of German money that there was apparently a bubble in Germany and that that bubble, as bubbles do, deflated. <laughs> and uh, I was out looking again and I found a job at, uh, at, a, a, at a, a, another small, very small company, a French filmmaker. Uh, it was called it had Philippe Martinez and Bauer Martinez and, and this was smaller movies. And, and yeah. uh, you know, Making making ends meet wherever we could. You know, I remember I, I, I again not to spread spread any bad word, but you know, I remember I, I, I had hired our PR agency to work on a movie, and the, and the controller of our company was leaving, and I went into him on the last day, and I said, "We have to do an accounting of how much we still owe them, how much we've paid them," and he looked at me and he said, "We haven't paid them anything." I'm like, "What? I hired these people. What do you mean?" And he's like, "Well, maybe if they if they want to work." If they want to get paid, maybe we can do a little bit more work and then we can pay them. And it just, it's like, wow, that's a whole nother side of the yeah. indie world where, you know, uh, it, 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 there's just a lot of stability at a big corporation. Well, and getting yeah. back to the big corporation, I was super, super lucky. I uh, uh, met somebody at Warner Brothers, uh, 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 or I can't even remember, heard about that they were looking for somebody. I met somebody, we got along really well. I joined Warner Brothers. And I was there for 14 years. And recently, 10 months ago, no, yeah, 10 months ago, uh, change of structure, change of management, change mm -hmm. of direction with the company, uh, COVID, my job was eliminated. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, and again, all a lot of learning. You know, the company mm -hmm. was moving more in the direction of streaming. HBO Max was yep. is, is a very, very big priority for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in an area that was focused on the theatrical movie going, uh, uh, publicity, publicizing theatrical releases. And, and, you know, they just had a different structure going on. And I think, as I said, you know, you combine that with COVID, which I feel has, in addition to so many other things, what it has done is it has accelerated changes that were coming in yeah. this business and probably various businesses people yeah. we were moving to a streaming basis that's how people were watching more and more movies 
it accelerated. We were moving to people having more flexible work styles and working from home more often. Mm -hmm. Super accelerated with COVID. Uh, and, oh, we I mean, Rick, or Dennis, we talk about this industry. And I know you and I talked about it. And just from, you know, what you, the history you've given us right now, how quickly things are changing. I mean, it's, it's changing this industry, like theatrical to streaming and just the stability. It just reminds me so much of MPTF, which of course, you know, why MPTF exists because this industry can be, well, it is so wonderful, but it can be so unstable and so yeah. challenging and it's so beautiful. You don't want to leave it and just go like be, you know, a bookkeeper somewhere because you can, you got to right. figure it out. And it's, it's so much about sports. I know you and I talked about that and you said, you know, you love sports, but it's the same way. A new coach comes in, a new athletic director, a new boss comes in. You win one game, it's on to the next. You're promoting one film, you're on to the next. And Yeah. Well, you know, I remember the other thing we were talking about, yeah. uh, you know, just the differences in different aspects of, of the business that I've been through. Um, but but that, that reflects a lot of people's experience. You know, when I worked on those independent companies, you know, I'd work on that movie, Alexander, for instance, I would work from the minute it was, from the time it was a script that Oliver Stone had agreed to do and wanted to do, and it was, and all the way through to its release, which was two months and months. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, when I'm at Warner Brothers, you want to do everything you can for the filmmaker and for that project, but invariably you have. 20 movies in one year, 52 weeks, you can figure it out. You have two and a half weeks on each movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be this thing, like, where am I going to find the time? And, you know, you end up, and this is the, it's the beauty and the curse of the business. You, you end up, you know, working 24 seven because, you know, you're committed to it and it's just the nature of it. But also, you know, when you put in two days on a movie uh, uh, that's going to come out in, like an Alexander that's going to come out in two years or a year, that's two days off that, you know, you have two and a half weeks of your life to work on that movie. So you just used up two days. And I mean, you don't, you don't budget it out like that. You work sure, on what sure. you have to work on. But, but to your point, when you're at a studio, you know, don't get too excited about the ones that really work. That's great if they really work. But there's another one, you know, there's another one coming in two weeks. And same thing, don't get yeah. too down because there's another one coming in a couple of weeks. And the commitment as the people on this, on this broadcast would know. The yeah. commitment of these artists and artisans and, 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 and workers and technical people and mm -hmm. everything to making these, pro these projects, which are just, you know, phenomenal. I mean, and, and you know, that's another, you, you end up working on projects that you need these huge companies to, right. to, to finance. To and carry through, them. yeah, absolutely. You can. And, uh, you know, and, you know, you, you had sent me a note uh, where we were just talking about prepping for this and thinking about, you know, stories in, in, in my background. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I went back on the specific movies, it's almost always, I mean, some of them were great experiences. I worked on the Hobbit movies. I worked on Mad Max Fury Road, Aquaman. I worked on The Hangover. And for all sorts of different reasons, you know, The Hangover was great. It was a tiny movie that no one thought much of that. Boom. Blew up. Yes. It blew up. The Hobbit <laughs> was a massive project. It was a follow-up to, you know, Lord of the Rings, which was already massive and it was a right. massive project. But it, it's really the people, you know, uh, uh, yeah. that you work with, whether it be the producers or the directors. And, you know, they're extremely creative and smart and, and you know, they can go over the edge because they're so committed to this or tied up in this project. For the, but right. for the most part, you know, they're pretty... They're smart and sensible. They're people, and um, you know, I What's just a remember, family. Like, you get to become families is, with and, every project is a different family. And I remember specifically on the Hangover, you know, working with Todd Phillips, and in the beginning, you mm -hmm. know, this was this movie that nobody really knew much about. Todd had, had the idea here, and I remember. Did it? Bring, some, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just remember bringing press out to the set, and Todd mm -hmm. was like. He's so smart because he was so, bring him out. Like, I'm like, is today a good day? Today's a good day. Bring him out. Is tomorrow a good day? If you have people tomorrow, bring him out. Because he knew he had a small little movie that, that it was going to really benefit him and benefit the movie a lot more than him. 
and yeah, and get then, people out to see it. Did you yeah. know at any like at any point during that project that all of a sudden you were like, uh, this is actually going to be pretty good? Yeah, I don't think we knew quite it was going to have that mm-hmm. magic that that it had because, uh, but but there was a time when we first started screening it for a test audience where the reaction was just so amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what I wanted to point out is also just, you know, the things you have to deal with in the business. You know, Todd was uh, uh, you know, inviting us to come out on that first movie and bring press to the set. And, but there was also then the realization when you get to movies two and three, and these people have become big stars now, and there's a lot of interest. You have to really be much um, more uh, discerning. Uh, yeah, so more guarded of who the, you're yeah. going to bring out because now you've got the hangover part two and this guy Zach Galifianakis who no one really even heard of is like America's darling you know mm-hmm. uh, and the best. uh and um yeah yeah and they were really good people and again it's, it's the people that's what I was going to bring up is as yeah. I go through the projects yep. I think of you know George Miller on Mad Max Fury Road was the, the most gentle man and the greatest man. Peter Jackson was absolutely wonderful. The Wachowskis, to work with the Wachowskis wow. was yeah. such an experience, you know, and one of my favorite projects, two of my favorite projects, unfortunately, you know, they're not always the financially successful. One of my favorite projects was Speed Racer, which I thought was groundbreaking. Oh, in, very cool. In what they had done. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, also how they were transitioning, which was groundbreaking in a whole social sense at that time. But um, they also worked on a movie called Cloud Atlas that was just beautiful and wonderful. And uh, uh, Wait, wait, I have to stop you because we, we need to talk about ECA. And you and I, you, we already did this before. We talked so long, like you and I can go so long. So I want to talk yes, about- Yes, we do have to talk about ECA. I know. Let, let's talk about Elders Climate Action yeah. and, and the great work you're doing and how so, you got involved. And in, in, Yeah, I mean- Yeah, so tell us I about was, it. I was um, out of work and um, wanted to do something, you know, as I looked at, at, at how do I want to spend my time, I want to do something that is meaningful. I don't want right. to, I don't want to, fade away and, you know, do nothing. Although, you know, relaxing is a good thing. Um, yeah, it would be but, okay. But your passion. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, and I thought about uh, doing things that matter to me and doing something that make a difference. And I think about the world that I'm going to leave, hopefully not too soon, for my children right. and and right. and for others and just the world as it is now. And what right. okay. where I looked and saw something that I was passionate about is that we have a problem with our climate that, that for all sorts of reasons, fossil fuels, uh, Mm -hmm. abuse of the environment, uh, lack of foresight, whatever, the the climate's in bad shape. It's getting warmer. uh, And we need, we need to do something about it. It's frightening to think that I heard that stuff back in the uh, seventies or the sixties and, and here we are in the in the twenties, going, yeah, we got to do something about that. And um, I there, yeah. and I'll tell everybody who is on this that there are a, a large number of organizations um, that um, that you can be part of that are trying to do something about this. And for me, uh, there's this one elders climate action. It should be elders for climate action. But you know. F-O-R. I know. I always feel reason. like I'm messing it up when I say, I but it's okay. Elders it's climate, elders action. climate yeah. action. Yeah. And it is, it is a, um, uh, it's affiliated to subdivision, whatever, of something called uh, Elmer Elders Action Network, which also gets involved in, in um, political issues. And God knows everything's become a political issue and even the environment yeah. is. But this is more straightforward, you know, focusing on the environment mm-hmm. and um so this you know, is the conservation green subset of elders action Network. yes exactly yeah. right and i don't know if i can do this but um probably not because it would take technical expertise but um i was going to attempt to share something on the screen um there oh i actually probably can if you don't mind um uh, I, little, let's ask our we can ask our yeah. producer or else we can always you know do yeah, it again we can or catch send up, it. Ca- yeah. yeah catch up either but what are, I, oh, I there's Jen. Hi. There's the boss. 
There's the boss. <laughs> El Jefe. Um, hey. Yes, absolutely share the screen. And I also agree with Courtney's line of reasoning. We need to have you back and just do a half hour on this. Okay, yeah. great. It's great. so important. So let me, let me um, uh, quickly... Um, and one day when we can, yeah, you share your screen. We'll have you on campus. Yeah. Because... Yeah. Well, this is a, that's a great segue because, yeah. um, uh, you know, there's just a lot you can do. If you're concerned about the yeah. environment, there's a lot you can do. Elders are, you, you may all know this, elders are, first of all, we have so much to offer, not just mm -hmm. elders of this group, just elder, older people. We have Absolutely. so much to offer. Absolutely. We have, generally speaking, we have some time on our hands. Um, and um, as I said, there's a number of organizations you can be part of. Elders for Climate Action, Elders Climate Action really worked for me because uh, it is a group that are people like me, not necessarily in the entertainment business, but people who are older and want to do something. Mm -hmm. um, it is a group that works with other groups too, so that we can, we can bring in. And, sure. um, and you know, when you talk about having me uh, come onto the campus at some point, which I, I hope we can do, uh, I, I've been doing some volunteer work with a group called Tree People, which also has a green shirt, by the way. Absolutely. We know Tree People, yeah. And uh -huh. uh, we're out, they have done this fantastic thing. They have planted 3,000 oak trees out in the Agoura Hills. And they Wonderful. are, you know, this big. And we go out every week and we, well, a couple, they go out more than every week, watering them, cultivating them. You build uh, because of the sun, as you well know, out there. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. build uh, shade structures around the, the little saplings as they're growing uh, because the sun is so strong. And, and, uh, and it's just very, very rewarding because uh, it's an amazing thing. It's 3,000 trees. And, you know, that's obviously. Well, and remember. oak trees, I mean, it's such a beautiful process. And uh, we've got a, my parents have, I think, like a 150-year-old oak tree in our backyard. Our campus has some incredible oak trees. Well, it is, one of those, it is one of those things like come back in 30 years and we're going to have yeah. a bunch of oak trees, which is great because it'll be more, it'll cool things, it mm -hmm. will clean the air. And, um, but, uh, but I was Is there a way for our residents who are, because they're, they're so computer savvy to, to do something kind of virtually? I mean, I know, what, what's the website, yeah. by the way? Well, the website for elders is, uh, here it is, uh, ECA. I think I have it up as well. I know, I just put it in here. I typed it in myself. ECA, ECA.org, I believe. I'm going to find that. Um, yeah, there is. We'll send lot, it out. A lot of what we do right now, you know, obviously, a lot of things are impacted by the yeah eldersclimateaction.org dot org www.eldersclimateaction.org yep. www and obviously a lot of it is impacted by the continuing COVID situation. I love this but, joining our voices with all generations. Very, very similar to the mission at MPTF to connect everyone yeah. and do great things. Yeah, and, it's wonderful. And, um, and uh, uh, a lot of work we've been doing has revolved uh, recently, guess what, everything's politics, has revolved around legislation and lobbying and mm -hmm. letter writing um, with the idea, and you choose to support what you want to support. And you also, by the way, with this group, you, you choose to get involved where you want to get involved. Right. But what, what, uh, what, it, what we've been doing is, uh, we, they have a very good system for tracking and informing you about the various bills that are up for uh, debate, for action. Mm -hmm. They very much are focused on the state uh, uh, legislature, which was something very new for me. You know, I thought of uh, voting as president. Or, yeah, but making it the more the micro, getting more it's involved very, with that. Exactly. Yeah. So I have been. You know, I, as part of what I do, and, and anybody can do this, I would write letters to uh, my uh, Senator Ben Allen or uh, mm -hmm. Councilman Richard Bloom, who represent me, um, uh, and uh, push them to, or just say to them that I would like you to support the, this legislation. And, and what, what Elders does is rather than you just saying, I'd like you to support climate legislation, it's 
I'd like you to support bill number 1395 because I know that's up right now and I know this is what it's about. And you could choose, you know, I don't really feel so strong about 1395, but bill, yeah, assembly bill 17, I really mm -hmm. feel strong about that one. And uh, I will say this, the good news, if anybody is representative by uh, uh, Senator Allen or Councilman Bloom, they are, they are superstars in the environmental movement. They're, they're extremely oh, that's supportive. Good. California's and, got a lot of great advocates in this. Yes, yes, it, We're it's lucky. great to be part of this because it, it is still it is still a a it's more than trend setting. But well, it, and I it, can imagine like a letter from a Dennis Higgins and some of our residents or people in the entertainment community who are so creative and so passionate. There's nothing like great. a well written letter. It, it absolutely great, and and you know calling them too, and they, you know the thing that's amazing yeah. me is how receptive they are because you know and you realize they they're hearing from their constituents and they want to get elected you know i don't mean to make it just about getting elected but they want to get elected next yeah. time too so they want to respond well, because they want to, they want to get elected to do great things you know yeah. so it's of course yeah no that so happens. so uh, you know the legislation is a big uh has been a big effort and and part of that mm -hmm. has been because uh i think i think what where we are now is the bills that got passed by the legislature are now on the governor's desk and he is signing. I think he has to have them all. This poor guy, I don't know why he wanted the job back. He had <laughs> 950 bills that were passed by the legislature this year oh my gosh. on his desk that he has to get signed by October 10th. Ooh. So um, God bless him. And, uh, and, and I, I thought I was busy. That's a lie. <laughs> That's right. That's and I a lie. his office to say, you know, and you call the office and you jokingly say, is the governor there? It's Dennis Higgins calling. And, you know, he's not there. But they have people who are, you know, at the very least tracking who is calling, you know, how many people, who is calling and supporting mm -hmm. what. Mm -hmm. And and knowing it's so important. What I have come away from this in my, my first year doing this is it's so important for me to feel like I'm doing something and making a difference. And right. for right. them to hear what the people who elected them and who will either elect them or not next time have to say, what we're concerned about. And, and overall, what Elders has been saying is, we are concerned about the climate. So you have to take this into account. And mm -hmm. I, I've got to say this also, you know, we, we now move on to, we're now looking into uh, uh, the legislation on the national level writing mm -hmm. to Diane Feinstein and uh, uh, Senator Padilla about including, uh, and another superstar, Ted Lieu, including- um, Love Ted Lieu, yeah. Yeah, including as much climate legislation as possible in the, um, in the reconciliation bill and hopefully getting that passed. And, and you know, it's interesting talking about working with other groups because I, I um, you can do that through elders, you can do that on, on your own. If you go to the website, there's a partnership page which is NRDC involved? I would imagine all this legislation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Course. But you know, a group I got involved with, which is is kind of fascinating, is the Sunrise Movement. And these are these are young young people. They, in fact, they you you go to their website. Oh, you told says, me about this. Yes, if you're I over thirty five, go over here. And, yeah, and it will say, "Do you want this?" Is I love this. Do you want to sign up for our over thirty five support email? You know, and and. So be it. They let them, you know, yes, I want to support you. And I'm, yes, I'll sit here and resent that. I'm not, you know, hey, I should be part of it, not just supporting right, it. It doesn't right. matter. We're all part of it. But, of course. Um, but, you know, I went out with them in, uh, you know, we, I wasn't necessarily doing this in the 60s or the 70s, but, you know, there's probably activists on this, uh, watching this, who were out, you oh, know, yeah. making their voices mm -hmm. heard. And and these that's what these guys are doing. These kids essentially are doing. They are, you know, we stood in front of Diane Feinstein's office, you know, and and, and I go over there and go, yeah, I'll stay with you because we're going to push for a climate core. And they're like, you know, we're not leaving until she signs. And yeah, like, like, are you ready for this? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, she's not in there, right? Like, she's not. Yeah, she's not coming out. But they were there, and they did. They stayed overnight, and. Um, and and the great thing is, you know, they have this energy of 
we're going to stay here. And they had this energy of, we got Joe Biden elected, and he better not be talking to the Republicans because he's got to do what he said he's going to do. And I would say, well, you know, he has to talk to the Republicans. That's kind of- And he should, of course. course. Yeah. Of course. And, we and should all I kind, of, mm-hmm. I kind of walk away going, you know what? Let them. Let them go for it. Because maybe an activist campaign needs an element of people who are yeah. way over. And and again, I get to the point of like, hey, I'm 67 years old and the world isn't, I didn't do a great job necessarily with the world, but, and I'm not taking the blame for it, but what I'm saying is. But even that bigger purpose of, we talk about, you know, you and I talked about how, what you're doing. And I remember that story, just that co-generational, the intergenerational, yep. everyone coming together. And sure, the messages might be, the same but filtered differently. Yes. And it's so important because the wisdom, they there can be wisdom and in under ex- 35 as well. There can be. And that's exactly right. It's not just yeah. that they have energy, more of energy than me. Right. Or that, and it's not just that I have experience and knowledge that they don't. We all have have it. And and it that's needs that sure. combination. And it needs, you know, I, listen, I'm passionate about it. the environment is a Politics aside is a big, big problem that that we are running out of time to do something about, and we still yeah. have time uh, to do something about. And um, you know, right. and it takes everybody, including those, you know, Greta Thunberg and people who are you know 15 years old. It's there. It's going to be their world, but it's not. We're still here, and it's our yeah. world too. And, and you, you are making a, a difference. It's you, you even it the may, little things collectively. Yeah, it makes, of course. It makes, you know, because we are. Yeah. You're we purpose worked, driven, Dennis. You're obviously very purpose driven. Yes. And we who have worked in this business or whatever business, you know, we have energy, we have skills, we have motivation. And, 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 you know, whether it was getting that film campaign done or getting that movie made or, or, or getting a bill passed, all of it was about motive, being motivated and accomplishing and do something positive. And the other thing I want to point out, you, there's an article in the Washington Post that I'll for, forward over to you. Uh, yeah. That, that, yeah. Which is, uh, 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 there was a, 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 I think it was a legislator or maybe a press person in the UK that referred to them as the gray greens. And these were older the people gray marching <laughs> in um, London and getting arrested. I'm not asking you all to go out and get arrested, but I'm not not telling you not to either. Uh, but they they were and they were saying just do know, something I'm, to act, right? I'm doing like you were saying in the 70s, you're still talking about the same problem, but get out there and do something. Do something. So, yeah. So the ECA mm-hmm. website uh, is a great place to go to to you know find out. And, and it's not uh, a membership, right? It's, it's not, just a resource. It's a great resource. Yes, I mean, you can sign up as a quote unquote, there's no dues or anything like that. Right, you can sign right. up as a quote unquote member to in order to get their emails. Um, sure, sure. You don't have to. Um, there is uh, every month, there is a uh, new members uh, one hour video orientation meeting, which is terrific. It just happened, I think, last week. So it, three weeks away again, but mm-hmm. it's a, you know, you'll find oh, it on great. the website. There's yeah. also monthly meetings where they bring in speakers. There are uh, uh, video resources where they have uh, past webinars and past speakers that would focus on different topics. Again, you know, it's a lot of legislation these days and the speaker who's coming in, I think next week, and it's on the website is it's about legislature and, 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 um, uh, and that kind of thing. The, the one thing I do want to say is, um, you know, in, in, oh, so there are also chapters, and there's a mm-hmm. local Southern California chapter that I belong to. And in fact, last week I was out with a group from the Conejo Valley, Conejo, Conejo Valley, Valley, which is right yeah. near you. Yeah. Um, Conejo Valley uh, 350. That's another organization, uh, uh, environmental organization. Mm-hmm. And we were out. Um, demonstrating, I don't want to say protesting, demonstrating in, in front of a local Chase Manhattan bank that happens to be a five-minute walk from the Motion Picture and Television campus. Nice. Uh, but demonstrating <laughs> to say, hey, FYI, Chase is a super big funder of fossil fuels, and we would like you to, as their customers or just as a, the public, to get them to reconsider that. And mm-hmm. uh, 
and, and what I'm learning shift their is, investment a little bit. Shift their investment exactly, mm-hmm. and and you know there's a whole movement. I'm sure people are aware of the Exxon, the uh, uh, yeah. I can't think what the name of the organization, but essentially they want seats on the Exxon board by saying it is not a smart business move for you to be continuing to invest in fossil fuels. If I'm putting my money into Exxon and I'm right. planning on leaving it there for my retirement 30 years from now, I don't want that company investing in fossil fuels because it's not going to make money because 10, whether it's five years from now, 10 years from now, we're going to be shifting away from fossil fuels. We're going to have to. Well, and that's an interesting way to get someone who maybe is not as, not everyone's con- as concerned about the environment as you are, which you know is so great, but if it's not a good financial investment, that's exactly. a way to peak a different there is population. A, there is a reason here. You know, I, yeah. I, the, the smart investor is not buying up coal fields right now. They're not a right. good long-term investment. Right. Um, but I do, so there's these chapters all over the, uh, well, literally all over the place. I mean, there's one in Southern California, there's one in Northern California uh, and others, which are, part of you can become that you could become a member again no dues you just could become a member and come to our meetings mm-hmm. um, there's monthly national meetings where you can just log on and and listen as my my dog is listening right now uh and, i know my, my uh, dog's sitting here like ears coming I, I hear a friend in the background right. <laughs> um and and there's local actions, which I think there'll be more of those as we knock on wood get through this COVID thing of Good. what people can do. Um, but a lot of it is is definitely what, what I found is a lot of it is doable from your computer from home, and a lot yep. of it is um, also learning about this. Not Absolutely. only we're calling on you to do this, you can go to this and learn about the environment and learn about what you can do. And and you know one of the things the the the, the man Richard Burke who is the uh, heads up our Southern California chapter when I was telling him what I was doing he was saying you know if any of them if any group whether it's one two twenty people you know are interested in talking or finding out about a particular area whether it's you know green energy or, or, mm-hmm. or regenerative agriculture we would be happy to arrange a Zoom call with them and just focus on that particular part of it. Well, I think that would be great, by the way, to follow up. I know we've got like maybe 20 seconds left, Mm -hmm. um, but that would be great because I wanted everyone to come and just learn about you and learn about what you're doing. But now we want you to come back and present some stuff. Love to come back. I'll send you things like, like, you know, the pages and that kind of thing. And the other, one last thing I want to say about our local group one, one thing that the local uh, uh, members were telling me, you know, they do these amateur- I feel like that's these, your director being like, we're, I think we're done at I this think point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm going to come back to you on the next one with what else they said. This has been great for me. It, it's been honestly really wonderful though, Dennis. Like I honestly, this time has gone by so quickly. I Let's love what again. you're doing. Let's do it again. Let's get you on campus. But and I'll thanks send for you- your passion. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm in the interim, I'm going to send you uh, some uh, resources, some atta- uh, documents, attached absolutely. that uh, that you can pass around. To people we'll share them and, with our residents. We'll share them with our population. We've, we've got a we lot of people concerned all, about it. In whatever yeah. way we can help you uh, to do something about the environment, to be get motivated, to get to do uh, take some actions that are enjoyable, or that you can help us to hopefully do something about improving our, our, our reaction to the climate crisis? Our, mm-hmm. our, our, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, um, Courtney, thank, thank you. you so much. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thank you and send all those resources our way as well. We'll have you back on the air and we'll be able to fire those slides. And I will you. feed that dog before then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you Take so care, much. All. We'll talk soon, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Courtney, we all right. To our favorite questions. We'll I, know, I know, time. but I know Sylvie's waiting. I know, it's okay. Dennis, we can't wait to have you back. I can't wait to be here. Bye-bye, guys. All right.